There'll be ghosts. Hello and welcome to the Bottled Imp Show. My name is Ken Boiter and this fine petal of a man is, it's Kedrick Winks. Hello. And this show is brought to you by the Bottled Imp. Exploring the realms of fantasy. Hello, hello, hello. Now, before we go any further, obviously we need to do this. The Sands of Time. And you're probably wondering, where's Julian? Well, you might not be wondering where's Julian as you know, of course you are, you're wondering where Julian is. Well, he is the co-creator of The Bottled Imp, he's also the editor and he directs stuff and he mucks about and he also makes the tea, which is kind, we do take it in turns. It's a lovely tea. And, yeah, lovely tea, and we thought, you know, well he's actually just standing over there. Hello Julian. Ooh. There he is. <laughs> and we just thought, you know, it'd be nice to spruce things up a little if we had co-guests, co-presenters once in a while for the series. Now we have our first one and this lovely man is Kedrick Winks. He is a games designer. Hello there. Hello. We from... I always like to shake hands. Well, why not? I know, exactly. Why not? I know, my hands are a little bit clammy. Very formal. So, sorry fine. about that. Um, yes, yeah, so Kedrick, he is a games designer. I've known mm. Kedrick now. When did we meet? We met three years ago? Probably. Two years yep. ago? Yeah. Yep. It was about a UK that. guy. UK, UK guy. Games Expo. Yes. She's coming up again? Yes, it is. Are you going to that? Are you going? I have. I don't know yet. I'll go if you go. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering, we haven't discussed that. But um, yeah, so we met there and tell us some about the games because this show is all about ghosts and one of your, is it best selling games, would you say? Yeah, let's say so. <laughs> Is Ghost Hunter. I've not really thought about it. it. It probably is. Let's say that. Ghost Hunter series. Now you've got loads of these out. Spirits, these are different decks. Monsters, witches, vampires. Have I got them all? You've got this uh, one there are Novas and Angels and Demons That's set the out one. there as well. Yes. Um, yeah, we can talk about the, the Ghost Hunter series. So the Ghost Hunter games are all kind of based on the on the premise that the players are members of a kind of Victorian gentleman's explorer, paranormal investigators club. Mm -hmm. um, uh, women are allowed to, equal opportunities employer, of course. Of of course. course uh, but, it, but it's the idea of gentlemanly conduct, I mean more than anything. Um, yeah, and then each deck is inspired by a different kind of piece of uh, folklore, and we thought, well, since the show today is ghosts, exactly. well, we have the, the spirits we'll deck. We have those, exactly. Um, and although they're all separate Games they can be played separately. They can also be shuffled together. So if you want to hunt ghosts and vampires simultaneously, uh, you can do that. And who doesn't? And who, doesn't? who doesn't want to do that? Yeah. So what else? You, and you've also done imps mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both uh, ghost hunter and imps actually uh, both done and available now through Triple H Games. Triple H Games, good plug. Get the plug in. Triple yeah, H yeah. Games. Triple H Games produce few, few board games, few card games, and a lot of role playing games as well. Exactly. I do, do you want to do some a role play to watch? Of imps. Yeah, yeah for sure. Wanna, and yeah, I just haven't had time. We'll do a playthrough or something. We should do a playthrough. Well, I have done a review of Ghost Hunter Spirit. It's a very good game. I'm not just saying that because it's sitting right here. It is a very good game, very enjoyable. And I like the sort of take that aspect to it as well. Okay, thanks. Um, and I do want to crack these ones open as well. But I'm not going to because I'll let you into a little secret. We've got a big giveaway coming up right at the end of the show. Now, also you've done Cadaver. Hey! <laughs> hey! Well done, I have done Cadaver. I pronounced it correctly first time out. Yeah. And I absolutely love this. This is my first introduction to one of your games. Mm -hmm. Again, by Triple H Games. And I really, really love that as well. A very simple two-player game. But it has got a sort of air of complexity in there mm. as well. And it's all about digging up bodies, isn't it? Reanimating corpses. Which is kind of your theme, because you, you go, you've got, you go under uh, ghastly Yeah, games. I'd rather not have that recorded on camera, oh, but yeah, okay. it is kind of my thing. All right then, okay, yep. So well, do you know what, they're, they're, it's all gothic horror, it it's all very horror. Victorian, yeah. and yeah, it's digging up bodies, and whenever I want to write a game, it always ends up with digging up bodies. Although, I don't know why. Although, you have got, I know you've got another game. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Do you want to talk about that one? Uh, yeah. Why not? Thank yeah, you very much. Give me the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so recently I've been working on a game uh, called Noir, mm. uh, which is a storytelling game. Uh, it's really different for me. It's not the kind of thing I've written before. You've played it. I've played it. I love it. I think you had fun. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I played it. Almost too much fun. I know. I'm really into it. We played it with you. Yeah. That was good. 
Um, I played it with two other sets of friends. I do oh, have right, a set okay. of friends. Yeah, well, yeah. I had to hire them in, obviously. For sure, for but, sure. Um, and they absolutely genuinely loved it as well, so it was a big success. There. I did not know that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It, it's, a, it's set in a sort of film noir world, um, but again, it's a game about murder, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's, it's quite who done it. It's, it's a who done it. Yeah. We know who's done it. So you get given a victim and a mm. killer from a, from a cast, That's right. and then you have to choose a means, a motive, and an opportunity and sort of sew them together into your own yeah. story, yeah. and the best yeah, yeah. story wins. Yeah, and it's um, really funny. Yeah, it's really good. But there's no ghosts in it, so maybe we should drop it's that. Nice. <laughs> but it'll be coming out on Kickstarter soon. Just keep your eyes open for Noir. Yes, exactly. Plus, you also designed and created the Bottled Imp game as well. Yes, I did. No yeah. ghosts in that. No ghosts Eva. in that. Just Eva. imps. And we we did uh, we did kickstart it. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we, we didn't reach our goal, but we will be kickstarting it mm -hmm. soon-ish when we can get our act together. Because genuinely, genuinely, we are very proud of that and we think it's a great game. So it'd be a shame if it wasn't out there. But of course, when we do get our asses in gear, oh, little swear word there, <laughs> cheeky, um, then <laughs> we that will. That's what that's yeah, that's what that's what, okay. that's a swear bell. That's what it is. Um, then we thought, yeah, we, you know, we, we, we will be telling you all about that. Anywho, help any, yourself to the Soreen. Oh, thank if you, you very much. One. Thank there you, very you much. go. But I'm, I've been pretty nasty there because I'm now going to say what's coming up on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> coming up on today's fantasy show are four fantastic facts about ghosts. Uh, the Great Fantasy Challenge, the Reading of the Discworld novels. Oh, yes. Uh, fantasy Chat, Aqua Dragons update. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that. Everybody's looking forward to mm. that. Charity Shop Fantasy Find, is right that happening? There. It should do this week. We and then finally yet. the Fantasy Imp Big Giveaway. Exactly, which we will get onto right at the end of the show. So, we've had a little chat, mm -hmm. that was nice. Had a bit of soaring. Had a bit of soaring. We'll in a minute. I think, what do the imps want? I think they want some fancy facts about ghosts. Do you want to roll? Fancy facts about ghosts. Nothing will give me more pleasure. Okay, roll the fancy fact about ghosts. <laughs> Ready dice. with the uh, giant, giant D6. Mm. Three. Luckily, there is only one, one to four facts. So if we'd run yeah. five, it wouldn't have. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Go for it, Ken. Right. I guess it was my own fault. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fact number three is one of the earliest known ghost sightings in the West took place in Athens, Greece. Hmm. Plithy the Younger, mm -hmm. round about sixty-three to one hundred and thirteen A.D. Described in a letter to Link Linnaeus, that's no way near it. <laughs> Link Ninus. Licinius. Oh, there you go. I think Licinius. One of us is educated. <laughs> Licinius Sura, Ath <laughs> something or other. Athenodorus. Oh, look at you. He knows he's <laughs> Greek. I don't know my Greek. Anyway, Athesistorus. <laughs> that's Sorry. another bloke. He yeah. is a Stoic philosopher and he decided mm -hmm. to rent a large Athenian house to investigate widespread rumours that it was haunted. Yeah. And this bloke stalked out, that's his name again in the script, stalked mm -hmm. out the house that night and sure enough, a devilish age spectre bound at feet and hands with rattling chains eventually appeared. The spirit then beckoned for Anthidorius to follow him. Anthidorius complied, but the ghost soon vanished. He was just mucking about then. Yeah. The philosopher marked the spot where the old man had disappeared and on the next day advised magistrates to dig there. The man's shackled bones were reportedly uncovered three years later. After a, after a proper burial, the haunting ceased. Now, I, I'm a bit of a sceptic. Are you? Yeah, yeah I'm a bit of a sceptic as ghosts. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, don't know. I thought we discussed this. Oh, yeah. I oh, know we did. I was yeah. going yeah, yeah. to be Scully to your moulder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've never watched that. <laughs> You've never seen I've, I've seen one or two episodes. It's fantastic. I didn't get into it. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. Um, now, I, w I would suggest the fact that the, the same guy yeah. who saw the ghost mm -hmm. shackled was then the man who pointed out where a shackled body was buried. Yeah, that's the spirit. It's pretty that's... suspect. Yeah, that's the ghost going, look, I'm here, I want, I want to be a proper burial, I'm shackled, and help this me. Is, this is why you're not Release. a homicide detective. <laughs> <laughs> look, and, and but what I found interesting about that is, A, that's a really cool thing, that that's one of the mm -hmm. earliest sightings, and B, that maybe that's where we get the idea of a ghost shackled going, sure. oh, you know, like uh, yeah. in Scrooge. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly. probably where Christmas it came Carol. from. Yeah, because otherwise, wh why... Would we have that image? 
There we go. Let's do another fact. Yes, hey. let's. Two. Two. Is this mine? Okay. Let's go for your. Oh, it's a short one. It is a short one. Yeah. Uh, so in 1856 AD, the first poltergeist was reported in a farmhouse in Germany. Mm. Poltergeist tormented a family by living there, throwing stones and starting fires, among other things. There we go. Throwing stones and starting I fires. Know. He's a fire starter. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I mean, where, where do these ghosts get off? What is, well, what is that? You're in the afterlife. Mm. And you've got your eternity, yeah. okay, you've graduated from this world to the next, the yeah. spirit realm, yeah. and you decide to yeah. throw stones. Well, you're bored, aren't you? That's what we did when we were kids, throwing stones and starting fires. You, thought, you haven't got a PlayStation or anything. That's what I did when I was ten. Yeah. Well, the thing is, right, the thing is, it, when, it, when, if you're a nasty person in this world, mm -hmm. when you cross over, you're still going to be that same person, essentially. You, are, you should learn a bit more when you get over there. But, you, so if you're nasty here, you're going to be nasty there. So if you were a bit of a troublemaker here, you're going to be, you know, you don't suddenly go, oh, I've seen the light. I don't know I'm amazing. about this. I don't know about this. Oh. I would warrant these people had children. <laughs> Who was that throwing stones? <laughs> um, There's always an guys. But you know what, though? Look, I have, this is this is proper ectoplasm. Look at this. Oh, for real? Yeah, this is proper ectoplasm. Do you know when I saw that on the table, I thought it was at Siki. <laughs> I know, I know. That doesn't go with yeah. Soreen. It's, well, to be honest, no. There was a couple of girls that came around... Steady. And uh, they said, would you like to buy some slime? I went, what? Said, yeah, a pound. Mm -hmm. They were obviously like, you know, girl guides or something. And I went, okay. Nice. Yeah, but it is official. But the, but the ectoplasm's ectoplasm. an interesting it one is. in itself. Because yeah. that's a phenomenon that was often pho photographed in Victorian exactly. times. Exactly. We've got ectoplasm in the game, actually. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because it used to come out of people's noses. Yeah. In fact, I had a, I, I know we're rambling here. I did a seance when I was a kid once, and we predicted the is, FA Cup explain, final. That explains we, a lot. We predicted yeah. the FA Cup final. Liverpool would lose, and they were winning everything at the time. Mm -hmm. And they and they lost to Wimbledon, and it was like, team in blue, 1-0. Mm -hmm. And it, that was the score, and Wimbledon played in blue. And that mm -hmm. was nobody had ever thought that would happen plus I well I mean they made it to the finals right yeah yeah no no but this was the final yeah but it yeah. was like Liverpool were going to win it so was, it was a fair likelihood well no I mean they were FA Cup finalists don't it wasn't like Accrington Stanley don't, no but okay. we predicted 1-0 okay. blue and, and Liverpool were going to win they were odds on they'd won the league they won the league that year I think they won the league previously it was a, the team of the 80s they were winning everything yeah, in the 70s. And, well, 80s. Anyway, but, um, and after the seance, I had a bit of ectoplasm on me. <laughs> I don't know if it was my mate had sneezed or not, but it was, there was some sort of, I was like, what is that? I've never seen that sort of, it's not what you're thinking it is either. Let's move on very quickly. No, I just love the idea that as a youngster, you had the ability <laughs> to talk to the dead. Yeah. And you chose to well, ask about the FA Cup final. Yeah. Well, what else would you want to know as a kid? We don't, yeah. What's life like after? No. Who's no, going to win the FA Cup? Cup final. So let's crack on then. So we're going to do the. Um, oh, hang on. No, I, I, I thought you were going to dress up really smartly because I've. You're normally very well dressed. No, my <laughs> my wife said you're going on Ken's show. <laughs> you need to make him look good. Yeah. Well. And then she dug out my granddad's old jumper and threw it on me. <laughs> well, you've done that. Why well, it's difficult. I mean, you're a handsome man anyway. But yeah. So I, 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 ultimately, though, I wanted to wear my poncho. But you know, hey. Let's crack on then. So we are going to be doing the Great Fancy Challenge now. Oh yes. Yes, this is for those of you that uh, are, are coming along with me on this journey. I am reading 41 Discworld novels in 41 weeks, but it's not consecutively because we're going to do them in the series. So we started last week and that was book one, which is The Colour of Magic. You've read it. I've read it. What did you think of not it? Not that copy. No, not this copy. This, I bought this recently actually. Uh, I love The Colour of Magic. Um, it's the introduction to the world. Yeah. 
For exactly. sure. Yeah. It's um it's, it's one of those stories when you look at the plot, it takes you absolutely everywhere. Yes. It really does yeah. drag you through the houses and yeah. you get all the sort of fantasy cliches and uh, and fantasy tropes in there, but they're all slightly subverted. It twists them, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and what what I sure. what I forgot is actually how dense it is. Mm-hmm. You kind of think, oh, the cover, it looks a bit throwaway, a bit of a light novel. It's not. There's a load of concepts in there. Mm -hmm, for sure. There's, you know, quite deep concepts about time and space and, um, y you know, like the mechanics, the nature of mm. the world. And this quote really sums it up brilliantly for me. It says, the, wacky the wackiest and most original fantasy since the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I hadn't really put those two together. And when you think about it, I think the humour yeah. is very similar because it is obviously... I didn't even realise what if fitted together sort of uh, temporarily. I, I, I thought that was before Hitchhiker's Guide, if I'm I honest. When well. did Pratchett well, that stick his flag in the sand? 83, that was. Okay, so that's early 80s. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. for sure. So you can see the parallels now, but I didn't really reference them. But it really inspired me as a kid to, to actually uh, to write, because then I wrote a similar sort of thing mm -hmm. when I was a kid. I wrote like 30,000 words of it. But I really liked it, and the characters, and Rince Wind, the, the wizard, he's a great character, isn't he? He's like the reluctant wizard, he's not a very clever wizard, he had a misfortune that happened to him, and therefore he can't really perform any spells, apart from one major spell that he had. And you've got the whole thing about the, the disc, it's a disc, and riding on the back of elephants, riding on a big giant turtle. So there's loads going on in there, and uh, yeah, and it's not really a kid's book. No, well, there are there's references to the the slave pits and the, exactly. the flesh pits, and yep. yeah, he runs out of pink paint. Thing. Yes, exactly. And then there's these. He mentions the word whore as well, and and there's a swear word in the last sort of twenty pages. Wow, it's a and word, you, isn't it? <laughs> no, I know, but in terms of you know being a parent and all yeah, that, yeah, you kind sure. of think, oh, I don't. Do I really want my kids to read this? But. I, I think I read it when I was about 12 mm -hmm. and really enjoyed it, but there's a load that went over my head. I mean, I read it now and I was like, wow, okay, it's more in depth than I thought it would be. Do you know what would be interesting? Just saying you wrote about 12 or 14 mm. years, is somebody who didn't read the fantasy genre to yes. then read that first. Yeah, yeah. How would that, if that was their approach? Well, for know, me, I hadn't really read a lot of fantasy at that okay. point. And so it was just like, this is all kind of, all of it is new to me. So you don't mm -hmm. know that he's subverting it. You know, like there's the barbarian. Yeah, you sure. don't know any of that. You just think, oh, these are. Oh, I don't cool, know. I, yeah, characters. when I first read it, I recognised Conan in there straight oh, okay. away. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. they'd taken that and gone, what happens when he, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, I love that, and I love the idea there's the dragons, the sort mm -hmm. of translucent dragons, it's actually just magic, a bit of spoilers there. Um, I love that idea. So there's loads packed into it. It's almost like it could have been a longer novel as well. Mm -hmm. Thank God it wasn't because I've got to read one a week. So the next one is The Light Fantastic. Have you read that one? I have, yeah. Excellent. I've re I read about the first ten years ago, but I've forgotten them. I've totally forgotten well, them. Well, I actually, when you said it was coming on the show, you're doing The Colour of Magic, I'd, in my head I'd confused The Light Fantastic with The oh, Colour okay. of Magic. And I had to quickly check. It's, well, it's a continuation. They both, yeah, yeah, but they're yeah. both the very early ones, yeah, aren't they? Yeah. And was it The Light... No, in fact, it was The Colour of Magic that was done in a graphic novel as well, wasn't That's it? That's right, and there's also a, a TV adaptation as well. Oh, with David with, Jason in it. Uh, yeah, and yeah, the for guy sure. that played Samwise Ganji, which... That should have been better than it was, shouldn't it? Well, I did see it. I've just got it through the post today. Oh, right, so sorry. So we will be reviewing that one. Yeah, I'll be taking another look at it. <laughs> that, was, that was my sort of capsule review. Yeah, yeah. Should have so been better than it was. Better it was. We'll find well, out. How are you going to film that? It's, it's you know, it's one of, uh, as, it's, as a concept, yes. as a, as a thing, yeah. it's like an unmakeable movie, right? Kind of. Let's but crack anyway, on sorry. then. No, that's cool. all right. No, because I'm aware of the time. We have got <laughs> some Aqua Dragons updating right now. I know. I'm excited as well. I'm very excited. <laughs> right, so it's day one of my, well, day two, I should say, of the Aqua Dragons. I put them in the water and yesterday, and it says in the instructions that you feed them every other day one scoop of this, this little spoon thing on the end here, and you do it every other day, starting with the second day. So it's the second day, so let's go. Oh, let me take that off first. Now what I've done is I've... This is the food, and it's this sort of green powder. No idea what it is. Sort of ground down Brussels sprouts or something. So it says not to overfeed it, so overfeed them. So I'm just going to put them in there. In it goes. There we go. That's enough, apparently. Who knows? So it does also say that um, you can't really see them until a couple of days. So I'm hoping 
that uh, after say three or four days we'll be able to see them properly but he says also to use a magnifying glass as well so anyway that's day two I've just fed them enjoy so here we are it's day four of my aqua dragons they were hatched on Friday I believe I think that's when I did it yes yeah, so it's day four and um, we've already fed them once and you would have thought yes activity but no no there's no activity just yet although I did think that there was some yesterday I thought I saw some swimming around at the top but no that's not what has happened so you're meant to feed them every other day and also you're meant to oxygenate oxygenate put bubbles in put air into the water so I've been doing that with the Pepeet, Pepet, Pepet, Pepeet, who's Pete, Pepet that they give you. So let's do that now. See the bubbles going in there? You probably can't. And uh, I'm just hoping I'm not going to suck any of the, of the Aqua Dragons up into there and kill them all. So there we go. So let's get the oxygenating going. Yeah, exciting, isn't it? Right, so that's enough of that. Then I'm going to feed them again. Here we are, my pretties. Oh, let's have a go. Now, it says not to overfeed them, so I'm only going to put in a little bit of this. Really not sure what this is. <laughs> Just green stuff. So let's put some of that in. Oh, that's not a lot, but it does say to not overfeed them. I'm going to give them a little bit more. Let's see if we can... <laughs> There we go. So that is Aqua Dragon update. Again, day four. Um, not a lot going on really. It's day six, and yes, they're alive. I have seen some sea monkeys. They've been born. They've been hatching, and they kind of float around up the top. I've seen them, and uh, it's actually night time now, so it's kind of well, it's dusk. So they're probably not out and about, and obviously trying to film them is quite tricky, but I'm going to feed them. So I fed them uh, two days ago, because every other, every other day you're meant to feed them. And it is just one spoonful of this green stuff, which again, I'm not 100% sure what it is. But it seems to be working. They're loving it. They're loving it. Plus, I've worked out what the pipette is for. <laughs> That's to oxygenate. I don't know if I've said this or not, but oxy ox oxygenate. There we go. You can probably see that. Now, basically, the sea monkeys look like specks of death. Death? Specks of dust. So, that's what they look like at the moment. Just specks of dust floating around. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that or not. Oh, is that one there? That's like a bigger one. They're growing. They are growing. So I'm going to be, so hopefully we can get some clear shots of them. I'll, I'll hold them up, I'll hold the tank up to the window when it's light and then you should be able to see them. <laughs> yes! <laughs> there we go! They're alive! Beautiful. They're alive! I'm I, so dragon-like. Yes, I know, exactly. No, they're just little specks at the moment. They're little specks. It's very difficult for me to film them, actually, with, with all my phone and lack of lighting. But I will try, and I might try and bring them in here to so we can kind of film them properly with a proper camera and Julian's technical know-how. So there we go. So we'll be continuing with the Aqua update, the Aqua Dragons update. And yes, I am aware I did call them sea monkeys. I'm sorry. Okay, what else we got here? Oh, we got some more. Well, I don't know if we can do any more facts. What we better do is the competition. Okay. I think we ought to do the competition. Oh, yeah, the competition. Yes, the competition. Now, you lucky people, we have some playmats. Ooh, playmats. Hard to get hold of. Not many of those left. Really? Yeah, they were really go. popular. We have some playmats. <laughs> we have one playmat. <laughs> oh, get right. Them out there. Two, two playmats to give away. And we have the movie soaring. Uh, the, the, the the games, the, the actual the, the cards. There we go. Look at this to give away. They're all sealed, uh, and even one of them's got the uh, price on there. So they're brand new, never been opened, never been played with these particular ones. And 
All you have to do is, what do you have to do again, Julian? We have to, you have to, on this post, where this goes up onto the Facebook page, our Bottled In Facebook page, we should, you, what you do is you like it, you comment that which competition you want to enter, mm -hmm. this one's called the Ghost Hunters, mm -hmm. and then you share that post as well, because obviously we want as many people to watch this show as possible. And you can enter all the competitions that we're going to run in, because we're going to do about two more, I think, for this series. And guess what? They're all going to be brought out on our live show. The winners will be announced on our live show, which is on the 21st of May. That's going to be, hopefully, an hour long, hey, eh, Julian? Who knows? But we do have a time for it. It's 21st of May. It's going to be 8 p.m. UK time. Uh, let me get this right. It's going to be 1 p.m. Central Standard Time in the good old US of A, and also 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as well, and that's also in the good old US of A. So that is our live show. So all the winners are going to, and you can enter the competition, all the competitions, if you want to. There we go. So that's, ex I'm excited about this. These I'm excited about that. Very good can games. I, can I yeah. enter? You can enter, of yes. course you can enter. Yes. Julian, we've got much more time? We've got three minutes. We could do another fact. Let's we'll do, do another, another fact. fact. I like yeah. another fact. Let's do another fact. Oh, we've done that one. Number one, go for it. Fact number one, <laughs> this is the best one. Okay, <laughs> half naked frozen chicken haunts the area of Pound Square in London's Highgate. Oh yeah. Uh, in 1626, about half past four, Sir Francis Bacon decided to conduct a spontaneous experiment to test the preservative qualities of snow whilst driving through the square. That sounds like something you do drunk, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. Spontaneous experiment. Why not? However, after stuffing a chicken with snow with his bare hands, he quickly <laughs> became ill and died. Serves him right, really, to be honest. Since then, many have claimed to hear the screeching of a chicken, or even seen a half-naked bird no. plucked of its feathers running in circles around the square. <laughs> right. If you want a ghost, Let's just on. break this and down. And you're not saying okay. ghosts are real. Sir Francis Bacon decides to conduct an yeah. uh, impromptu experiment. Yeah. Okay, sounds like something... Sounds like something you've done drunk, mm -hmm. which involves stuffing a dead chicken with snow, <laughs> which he subsequently dies from. Yeah, I don't know what he's Presumably to test. salmonella or yeah, what's, ha what's happened there? Or frostbite? I don't know. Or being struck down by God. <laughs> that's well, probably what's happened. That's a different show, sure. That's <laughs> a different conversation. Well, I do want to know, but the Bible, you know, um, fantasy and religion. Well, this is where well, I was reading some of these facts, and it talks about the dates, and I think. Well, yeah. The Old Testament yeah, exactly. mentions a lot mentions of spirits, spirits a lot of ghosts, ghosts, all of that. I think that's all we've got time for. So thank you so much for coming in, Kedrick. You've been great. Thank you for asking me on. Thank, thank you. you for the story. Thank you. Yes, I'm glad you like it. He doesn't like eating on the show, honestly. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, but we have these. So thank you so much for the competition prizes. That's brilliant of you. And what else have I got to say here? Oh, yes, remember to subscribe to check out our Facebook page as well as our Facebook group. You can go to the Facebook Fellowship, Bottled In Fellowship, and click join and we'll, and we'll add, uh, yeah, click join and we'll add you in. What else? Oh, leave any comments about the show. If you, you know, if you like the show, let us know what you think of it. We do have a Friday Fancy show coming out, obviously every Friday. We do reviews and other stuff there as well. And we do have an Imp Chat Live that I do on the Facebook page. That is Wednesday the 25th. It's normally a Tuesday, but I've had to change it because I'm doing a rehearsal for a play that I'm in. But lastly, remember to keep your Imps bottled. Take care. Till the next time.